is uh, Dubs. And we are here. We're here and this is The Wash. Because eventually everything comes out in The, the wash. wash. You know, yes. like, you know, and I, I try to equate it to this. It's like getting, you ever have had like an old pair of jeans that you washed? Yes. And, uh, all of a sudden you open a pocket and... I still do, but go ahead. And you're, uh, you find like a note. Like, and you open the note... And it'll be like a note for maybe an, an ex-girlfriend or maybe something that you were supposed to do. And it's just that little bit of information. But that little that little piece of paper, it sort of brings up uh, sort of visions. Like little movies start to play in your head. Well, we're just that little movie here at The Wash. Nice. That's all we are. So how was your week so far? Nice. Um, the week is good. The week was very good. Same as, same as last week, pretty much. And the week before that. I don't know. They all seem the same. But, you know... They're always productive. You know, I make sure of that. So, yeah, everything is good. I'm glad to hear that, you know, especially during this um, COVID time. It does it does actually seem like we're in a continuous loop. Every day does sort of seem the same. It's not really days of survival. It's more like days of just getting through the next day. I mean, I actually, I actually figured about time. You know, I, three weeks ago, I actually lost a Thursday. Mm. Have you ever lost a day? Yes, yes. That is the craziest thing mm-hmm. to lose a day. Mm-hmm. To lose, and let me and let me tell you about the Thursdays too. Yeah, Thursdays I go to uh, Del Taco, and I get the three chicken soft tacos for two seventy nine. Two seventy nine, and they're decent tacos. I mean, I know you're, you know, very um, sort of um, stringent on your uh, nutritional regimen. Yes, I am. Yeah, so I mean. Very- I, a fast food, uh, chicken soft tacos. Very t- stringent. Yes. Very stringent. No joke. So I'm, I'm thinking like a, a fast food chicken soft taco to you is probably like blasphemous anyway. Well, the first thing that came to my mind when you said, I'll just, I'll just picture the ingredients that they put. I, just, <laughs> I don't even think about <laughs> anything. I got past the wrapper, past okay. the, the service. Okay. All I thought about was just the, the meat they use, which is, isn't meat probably. It isn't meat? You don't think so? I, I, I don't think it is. Man, I don't know what that stuff is they put in there. Mm-hmm. It's probably it's probably generated in the warehouse, and they just most likely. I mean, but um, yeah, just just uh, just bad stuff, bad stuff all the way around. What else do you think it has in it besides um, clothes? I mean, they probably only the only real thing that's probably inside those tacos and burritos. I'd say um, the lettuce, that is and that's awesome. probably just there's nothing in it. That's just water. Mm-hmm. It's just you know generated in the warehouse too. Mm-hmm. The tomato, same way, house grown, some warehouse. So there's no nutritional value in any of it, probably. Nothing. What else? The taco shell. Um, what do you got? Refried beans in there? I don't know what you got inside. No. I don't know. It's just all terrible. It's all terrible. No, so I was actually, I was actually scared to bring it up. I was actually a little embarrassed. It's almost like when you have, like, uh, like when you have to tell somebody you have to use their bathroom, mm. but then they're asking, hey, what is it? Number one or number two? Number one is no problem. You say, hey. Okay, number one, leave me alone. But number two, it takes you a little bit of courage. Right. You know, you, that's, that's rough. That's rough. You have to tell them. I, yes. I, never, I, would, I wouldn't use it if that was the case. But yeah. See, that's how I felt like when I was going to bring up the subject of the, the chicken, I'm soft tacos from Del Taco. I, I, it was like I had to do number two. Yeah. And you were like, well, <laughs> and you well, right them. away. You know. You know how it is. <laughs> so, going back to that, going back, I lost a Thursday. And I, I'm saying I lost a Thursday. And the only way I knew that I lost a Thursday is because I I wanted to get the tacos because it's like sort of a very cheap meal for me. You know, I'm still sort of I'm very frugal sometimes when it comes to food. I know that's not a good thing, but uh, so I always get these on Thursdays, like sort of a little religious sort of a uh, ceremony I do to myself. You know, for myself. Treat not to yourself. Myself. Yes. Well, to, well, I guess it's, I guess it could be a treat, but it's more you know, like your body's calling for. But go ahead, I'm listening. Also, I'm addicted. Yes. That's what it is. I'm addicted. That's what it is. <laughs> to chicken. There's nothing more. I'm saying everything just as soon as you say it, it just pops in my head. Yeah. It got me. Yeah. It got me with the clone chicken. That's what's calling you on Thursdays. You know, you, wow. your body fiends for it. You, your body, you, and then you actually miss the Thursday. So that's pretty. Uh, that's amazing. Okay, so we just broke down how bad food has an addictive element to it. So it's actually not a ritual call. I mean, it's actually whatever ingredients they're putting the um, sort of new age. What's that, SMG? Hmm. They put in there that's attracting my... Without me knowing it, it's making me go buy these chicken soft tacos. And I'm thinking, it's, you know, I'm minimalizing it, normalizing it. Now I'm acting like, well, this is some kind of ritual that I do on Thursdays because it's special, sort of right. pseudo-religious. 
But no. Simply put, I'm chemically addicted yes. to chicken soft tacos. Yeah. Wow. To those in particular, yeah. That is crazy how we just mm-hmm. fell down that, that rabbit hole. But like we did, yeah. we literally together fell down our, well, you're probably still up top saying, well, I would never eat that, so I I'm, would never go down that rabbit hole. I'm just going to tell you. I used to. Okay. I used to eat them. I mean, I enjoyed them in the past, but you know, I always knew that these are, these are terrible for my body. They taste good on the tongue, in and out. I haven't eaten McDonald's in 20 years, 30 years. But in and out you know, I, I do that. Carl's Jr. tastes so good. At the same time, I know once it hits the, you know, the intestine, the belly, it's all bad. You know, it's, it's all bad for the body. Oh, what, what, Sugar, salt. We'll touch, we'll touch on two things. And, and we'll touch on three things, actually. I'll touch on the sodium, too. Okay, so the first thing I want to touch on is this, that, that you just... You just highly embarrassed me again. It's like right now we're having sort of like a, like a, conf- I'm in a confessional. You're my priest. But the, the kind of priest that doesn't touch people. You're the kind of priest that tells us how it is. Hey, Father, I did this. Well, then you're probably going to go to hell if you don't change. Oh, dang, Father. So here's what I'm trying to say right here is, is that the chicken soft tacos, yes, do taste good. But even worse, I had two McDoubles yesterday. And I haven't had McDonald's. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm lying. I, I, they had a Big Mac meal, so I had like for the last three weeks I've eaten McDonald's like one time a day. But then you just said you have not had McDonald's in 30 years. Do you know what that makes me feel like? I feel like some kind of savage that just woke up in the Amazon and I've just gotten outside of my hut. You notice yes. that I've walked and there's been a major highway in front of my face the whole time. That's crazy. 30 years of no McDonald's. 30 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not, not a craving, not a desire. Nada. Wow. And and just to, it's the, you're addicted to it. I've known you for a long time, so mm-hmm. you've given up a lot. You've mm-hmm. given up a lot of uh, bad foods that mm-hmm. you used to eat in mm-hmm. the past. Uh, at the same time, like you said, when you treat yourself, that's a continuance. That's what Jay does in Vegas. Mm-hmm. They, every time I talk to Jay, Thursday, Friday comes around, he had a good week of work, you know, treat yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not to treat myself. But he forgets that he, he treated himself three days ago. You know what I mean? It, it, that, every time I'm on the phone, I'm like, I'm treat myself. Did you, treat, did you just get a, a full pizza to the head like two days ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. So you treat yourself again. Oh, okay, I see. He really loves himself. That's why, that's why you're 250 and 5'7". You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's kind of he continuously treating himself. J, J, J. J, 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 Rock. J, Slay. You know... It's, it's crazy that, that you say that. Um, because I remember there was a time, and you remember this time, and this is when I think um, around the time we, when I first moved to California, and I saw, I think you actually saw my eating habits. Right. And how I, I would eat like a, a whole cheesecake in a, in a day. Milk. I had milk. Had I had gallons milk. of you milk. You had to have milk. You, had to, you, went to, you went to the liquor store across the street, and you always had a little carton of milk. I forgot to go get my, my milk, yo. All right, go get your milk, D. Wow. Yeah. And it's been like a year since I've actually... No, it's been more than a year since I've actually drank cow's milk. Really? It's been that long? Yeah. You gave it up? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, dairy. I've definitely I've definitely tried to give up dairy. I'll, I'll eat cheese sometimes if I'm quote-unquote treating myself. Because every once in a while, you know, I still partake of the fast food sin. Yes, I, I still do that. So I'll go to get like a, like a jumbo jack at um, Jack in a Box. And I never get cheese. Mm. Never. I never get cheese. I mean, when they ask me, uh, would you like cheese on that? There's like a little voice from my intestines to say, you don't need that cheese. It's bad enough what you're doing. Don't eat the cheese. Cheese is so good, though. It tastes it, so good. Well, it's like the ultimate compliment. Like, do you want cheese? It's like a compliment. Like, that's a very nice suit you wear. The ultimate cheeseburger. Jack in the box. Uh-huh. You have to have it. Have you had one? I've only had... The Jumbo Jack with cheese. Never had the ultimate cheeseburger. Never. Oh, my goodness. But I have a feeling that I might have it tonight now. I'm going to, quote, unquote, treat myself when I, would treat, oh, I, I that's, treated that's myself treat yesterday. treat treats right there. That's going to really hit you. But that thing on your tongue, mm. oh, my goodness. Ultimate cheese. But I haven't had one in 20 years. 20 but years. When I did eat them, oh, my goodness. They yeah. just melted in your mouth, man. They got they got three different cheese. That's called the ultimate cheeseburger. Okay. A couple different slaps of meat. And it's pretty big. I don't know. Maybe maybe I was younger back then. It looked big, but uh-huh. I think they're a pretty good size. It's pretty big. Like like food is big now. Big serve foods. Uh, servings of food are big. So you're a cheese person. What's your favorite kind of cheese? Hmm. Well, I eat cheddar at home. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I shop at Vons. I get a big block of cheddar and uh, some good cheddar. Good cheese, though. Not, not cheap stuff. I get okay. good, you know, a little more expensive cheese. And you can you can taste the difference. You can, mm-hmm. It's better for you, I believe. You're not using as many chemicals. They try to keep it as, uh, you know, as real as possible mm-hmm. without the additives. But, oh, it just tastes great, man. You pay for quality, man. Pay you do quality. eat quality food. I, I have seen that. I've witnessed this uh, for myself. You will go into a grocery store and you will pay the extra for the extra. Well, I will go for maybe low, mid-range. I look more for price than quality. But mm. I will try to at least look for a name brand. At least a brand right. that I think, okay, is that that's at least not... I like to eat Harvita. It's a weird cheese. I discovered it at Ralph's. Um, I was really into making my own turkey burgers. So what I would do is I would go... Into Ralph's on uh, Ventura Boulevard, and I would try to find exotic cheeses to put on my turkey burger. Because mm. I'm thinking, man, you're doing a turkey burger. You're on the next level of nutrition, which you're actually not. Mm. Because a turkey burger, I think it's just, a, it's, it's, I think it's a little lighter, a little less oil, but it's the same amount of protein mm. as a hamburger. It's Turkey burgers and hamburgers are basically the same, same thing. It's the same. But I thought, okay, well, you're, you're, eating, you're eating a turkey burger. Get, the, get an exotic cheese. So it's, it's uh, I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's H A V A R T I Harvita, something like that. Is it? Mm. But it has, it has to become some kind of Middle Eastern cheese. But mm. it's delicious. Right. I love that. And pepper jack. I'm a big pepper jack. Pepper jack person. is tasty as well. Very tasty. Pepper jack is good. A nice sharp cheddar. Mm. That is probably one of the most intoxicating cheeses ever. And I like to smell it. They got a cheese shop in um. Bixby Knowles on Long Beach. Mm. And I've never been inside there, but just looking outside, it's like one of those old-fashioned cheese stores that you see like in Germany or France. or so It has a very European sort of um, nice. quality to it. Nice. But I've never seen anybody in the store. Three cheese, ultimate tough cheese. Tough Yeah, tough sell. And it's, it is hard to sell cheese. Imagine if you had to wake up every morning and you knew that your life depended on selling cheese. Yes. <laughs> So. That's the job. That's the job, man. Especially That's out there in California. You go, you go, you go to other states. I don't know how it is back in Jersey, mm-hmm. man. You haven't been there, and you know it's been a while since mm-hmm. you've been there. But mm-hmm. how's the cheese section in Jersey? You know the crazy thing about New Jersey is this. Um, in New Jersey, we have something, and they have, I think they have one here in San Pedro. One is a deli, right? And a deli is when they have um, slab, not slab, rolls of meat rolled up in a refrigerated um, section in front of you. And you get to look at the meat and you get to say, hey, I have a pound of bologna. Well, I said, yeah, I guess a deli section in a, in a grocery store is the same thing. But they used to have actually stores. You'd go to the back and it'd be the deli. So you get out of the store, you walk to the back and, you know, you, you, you might have um, grilled cheese. Maybe my mom sent me to the store. Hey, we want you, I want you to go there and get a half a pound of American cheese for dinner tonight because we're going to have soup and salads. Well, it's not sandwiches from Jersey. <laughs> Soup and sandwiches. Right, right. Jersey, we don't even eat salads. We don't right. even know what a salad is. We, right. we, we, we replace a salad with an ice cream. Right. Anyway, so she sent me to the store. I'd look at this this, this this block of cheese, and I'd say, hey, give me a give me a half a pound of that. The, the person takes the meat and just cuts it in front of you and gives it to you. So our, our cheese section is not exotic. It's, it's just right there with the meat. You just go up, hey, give me that. Pretty tiny, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Pretty tiny. Yeah, so that was my point. And in the, in, the, in the spot you're talking about is probably on 8th Street, right next to 8th Street Park. That's the closest thing to a, a real deli, mm-hmm. you know, like an East Coast deli yes, that we yeah. have here. Mm-hmm. You know, got Italians in there. You know, Ronnie walk. Yeah, you know, you walk in, they're yelling across at each other. They, they got all the meats lined up. They got the cheese. That's all it is. The rock, meat cheese, the whole place. Vin, oh, yeah, they're real Italians. Yeah. I actually trained one of them. I actually trained, you trained one with them. Them? Yeah, yeah. He's a straight Italian boy. He, he works at that deli. So, so they're, they're like, um, not the stereotypical sort of mafioso Brooklyn. Oh no, no, these are like this family oriented. That's the family, family business. They're Italian. They're tough. He, he's he's buffed out the mm-hmm. game. You know, mm-hmm. he's a, he's a California Italian, but. Mm-hmm. No, they're tough, but they, they carry that East Coast mentality. Well, Italians are tough people, yeah. man. It's like Iraqi's one of the more, and Iraqi would whoop somebody's ass, but, you know, he's, he's one of the nicer Italians. You know, yeah. Italians are kind of like Mick. Remember Mickey from um, Rocky? Yeah. His, um, Rocky's brother-in-law, Mick, yeah, you will rock, you know, yeah, rock, you know, rock. Tough, tough, tough people, man. Tough, tough people. people. You know, I, I always try to, I try to find flaws, because Jay, I brought mm-hmm. up Jay earlier. He, mm-hmm. he's, he's half Italian. His mm-hmm. dad is Sicilian. But he's always praising the Italians. Oh, oh yeah. 
screw the Italians. Because he's always talking about them, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going against them. Mm-hmm. But the more I research, the more I look, and the more I see something happening, it's usually an Italian doing it. You know, mm-hmm. usually an Italian, mm-hmm. you know, the best artist, the best pianist, the, the best, yeah. man, everything. I mean, just an Italian, even the fighters, Rocky Marciano, mm-hmm. um, the, the light heavyweight, mm-hmm. uh, what's his name, the, the Calzaghi. He's oh. from England, but he's t- Italian. He's English Italian? No, he's he's, he's, he's ethnicity is Italian, but he he, was, he, was, he lived in England, so he's wow. from England. Wow! But he's an Italian. So. I've never heard an Italian with an English accent. It got to be amazing. That'd Isn't be that an crazy? amazing yeah. experience. Wow! So, so oh, wow! I've never known Kazaki. Some man. ethnicity yeah. was Italian, but they're actually English or British. Yeah, British Italian. Ma- Paul Malinagi is that his name? Malinagi. Paul Malinagi. I think right. he'd be Italian. Is he? I think so with the double G's. Anytime you see a oh, double nice. G. Well, that's yeah. the one I was that was on sparring with um, that the MMA cat. Um, oh, Colin McGregor. 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 What are you McGregor. doing? McGregor. Hey, yeah. what you want to spar with oh, me for? Ireland. Hey, I like the Irish. Yeah. What you want to spar with me for? The Italian. You want to yeah. throw it on? You want to talk rocks? about cocky? That, that is the cockiest <laughs> man I've ever seen in my life. That boy, he walks out grabbing Yo. his stuff. He just walks out a big, big stride and grabbing his ball. You know, yeah. Yo, that dude will beat you at anything. He'll beat you at checkers. I, you want to play some checkers with me, you bastard? I played the checkers and I, and I'm punching your face. You want to play checkers? I'm punching your face. Yeah, he's a yo. competitor, man. He's a competitor. Very, he's you a know, competitor. I'm happy for his success, man. Like, he's one of these guys, like, sort of from, like, not the streets, but like a hard, like, I'm um, sort of middle class life in Ireland. Went off. Ireland's and, tough. Yeah, yeah. Ireland's tough. They got streets out there, got gangs, you know, they, they grew up tough. It's an old school yeah. developing nation. It's not like a, like a U.S. or Canada or England, it's like a little little country. I'm not going to say third world, but I'll say developing. Maybe second world. People uh, got the potato famine, hit them that one time, and half the uh, Irish came here. But you know, it's a country that's had its problems. You know, people who are probably in transit. It's like old school Korea. Like it's a really good country where people leave because mm. it's so crowded, and they go to other places. Right. But they still do carry, and they bring. A wealth of experience, a wealth of knowledge. You know, both have good reputations. You no know, Koreans, awesome. and Italians. Yeah, awesome yeah. people. They love. Well, they love Irish, their. They Irish. love their people. They yeah. love. They love each other. That's Ireland. It. I mean, I'm. I'm. What? I don't know how much percentage of Irish I have in me. Probably a lot. Mm-hmm. My mom's, I think, half Irish. But yeah. So that's enough for join the club. That's enough to come in. Can you come in? You got to wipe your feet off. Yeah. Those are rocks. You got to watch McGregor. McGregor's gonna fight tonight. I mean, he's just must stew. Hey, that's funny. That McGregor has built that whole bad boy persona, but I've seen him on like the um, I don't know the Ultimate Fighter or whatever that is that that thing. Dana White has this um, reality show where he brings right. all these fighters and he has them live under a house, gives them alcohol. You know, like the real world, right? Both fighters, well, the MMA fighters. Yeah, so. but they had to, you have Colin McGregor on there, and Colin McGregor is like calling it, all these dudes hate him. All their faces register hate because of the jealousy. But it's like it's like when you're jealous of somebody that can. They destroy you and what you're jealous of them in. Like, for example, if, I, if I'm playing basketball, I mean, I see a, a guy who's like like 5'10", but can do every dunk. I'm like, I'm jealous of this dude. Now, if I don't like him, like, if I personally like him, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'm, I'm you know, okay. But if I don't like him, I'm jumping on everything against him. Well, he can't dribble. Yeah, yeah, nah, he definitely can't dribble. His dribble sucks. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, that's all somebody needs to say. I'm there like a, like a jealous dog. You know, like... He, he throws a 360 down. They say, yeah, but, you know, he, he really can't use his left hand. That, yeah, he can't use his left hand. He's horrible left hand. He's a horrible left hand dribbler. He sucks. Because I'm jealous. I hate, I'm hatefully jealous of his jumping skills. So anything they say, well, on this show, I was like, well, well Colin McGregor. Anything Colin McGregor would say, hey, you know, I think my right hand is probably the strongest. Your right hand sucks, dude. It does. No, isn't his hand right? Yeah, dude, your right hand sucks. Yeah, your right hand sucks. They all jump on everything, but he comes back at them. Like he comes back, like he don't care. Well, I, the Irish are very witty, very yeah. witty. Yo, your tongue, yeah, yeah. yo, he got some quick, witty tongue. Quick. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, very quick. Wow, it's like their tongue. Uh, uh, that's funny. It's almost like biblical a little because they say the tongue is sort of like uh, the uh, controls the body. Well, that's the knowledge. Yes, yeah. that's the knowledge he has. I mean, that's the experience mm-hmm. he has. That's the life experience. Mm-hmm. When people can just come back at you with something, they they got they have that experience. They have that knowledge, man. But you know what the craziest thing is? I'm going to tell you, Dubs. This is you just went, uh, man. You open when we you talk. You open all these freaking like parallel universe like rabbit holes. Cause-